Referee Jim Barron trying to get that Bolton team in line. It's Calvin Castine. It's the last day of September, September 30th, 2006. And it's part of a big soccer day at Shazy. It's the last uh, leg of the soccer day, but it's a big soccer day in the North Country. Earlier today, we were in, Shea in uh, Moores for the third annual Roxanne Dumas uh, Luan Dragoon uh, Memorial Tournament. And there were 30 or 40 youth teams there and on three different locations. And it was a spectacular sight, but they've been playing soccer here in addition to that at Shazy all day and uh, at all the levels. Welcome everybody. And we're going to listen to Joey Trombley as he introduces the uh, lineups for Bolton and Shay-Z. Number one ranked team in the state and two-time defending state champion are Shay-Z Eagles. Let's meet Bolton. A senior, Chris Bliley. Senior, Jack Riley, a senior, Wayne Rich, senior, Dan Sheridan, senior, David Smith, junior, Kyle Ronquist, junior, Cody Cover, junior, Luke Shane, Junior Carl Stromberg. Sophomore Rob Chapman. Sophomore Sam Gabriel. Sophomore Ben Gaddy. Sophomore Tyler Gantner. Sophomore Dylan Grid. Sophomore Sean Fow. Sophomore Casey Russ. Sophomore Jake Russell. Sophomore Donnie Samus. Sophomore Sean Thompson. And freshman Harry Caldwell. And now for our Eagles of Shazy, Kyle the Fountain Jr. Senior Kenny Boyer. Senior Evan Green. Senior Jacob Spiegel. Senior Justin Guerin. Senior Matt Osher. Senior Jordan Spiegel. Sophomore Stetson Fields. Senior Jeremy Reynolds. Senior Will Souza. Junior Matt Roberts. Junior Corey Ellis. Junior John Bailey. Sophomore Jason Baker. Senior Casey Trombley. Sophomore Brad Hansen. Junior Eric Martin. Sophomore Nathan Rossini. Junior Kyle Reynolds. Junior Perry Latchamore. Junior Nolan Ryan. Junior Galen Trombley. Junior Jacob Beeman. Junior Stephen Labumbar. Junior Tyson Dupree. Bolton is coached by Mr. Thomas McGurrow, and the varsity boys soccer team is coached by head coach Rod McCullough and assistant coach Ian Brasser. Tonight's game will be officiated by Gary Kaiser and Jim Barron. Please stand and remove your hat as we honor our flag and our country as we play the national anthem.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, George Brenler Field on this Saturday night. It's a beautiful fall night in Shazy. The game between the Shazy Eagles and the Bolton Eagles, who have the same name as Shazy. They're from the south. Shazy is from the north. Stab Shazy comes into this game. Uh, they're still undefeated. Uh, they're number one state ranked, uh, as they have been uh, for the last two years. And it's uh, they're actually sharing that distinction with the Shazy girls. And I think it's been a long. I don't think it's ever been done actually. The boys and girls uh, have both been ranked at the same time. Joey, this is going to be a great game tonight. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful for Bolton to come down and play against the Shazy Eagles. Uh, like you say, undefeated team, very powerful team. Uh, a little bit injury plague team tonight. Um, we have uh, a few members out, a few people that are playing. Actually, wow, nice shot right there. Uh, uh, a few players that are playing that are injured, and uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit different for Shady tonight, but I think they got enough strength uh, that they're going to be able to pull this off. Uh, hopefully, you never know, uh, but we'll see what happens. Well, Stab, you were with me down at the Crown Point game, and uh, actually your son, Jacob Spiegel, got a um, kicked in the foot, and uh, we were a little concerned there at first, but it was badly bruised. He's out till next Thursday. And then last night, you were with us again last night when we were in uh, Potsdam to watch the game against um, Augensburg, and uh, your other son, Jordan, uh, pulled a hamstring. So how's he doing today? Um, he's very, very sore. He, I'm not sure how long he's going to be out. Um, I just talked to Dr. Racine, and he did uh, get together with Jordan before the game and uh, they are he, he did work his muscles a little bit but he said he's gonna have to go some, through some therapy uh, run the bike uh, take some walks stretch the muscle see what happens uh, but he's gonna be out for maybe a week ten days uh, Casey Lauren has a strained uh, groin muscle uh, Mr. Ryan our top scorer for the league and uh, he, he's not up to 100%, but he's out there tonight. I'll tell you, they, they're, paying, they're playing through some pain, but uh, they're a tough team, and they got a lot of depth, so we'll see what happens. Well, Stab, it's been a grueling week for the boys from Shazy. They've had, I think this is their fourth game in five days. Uh, they had a, a long trip down to Crown Point, which is a good hour and a half trip, probably two hours by bus. Uh, the same thing last night, going to Potsdam to play Augensburg. And I think it was great that they went to, to Potsdam to play Augensburg because they have to play some tougher competition if they want to advance uh, further as the uh, the year goes on. I'll tell you, last night's game was an incredible game. Uh, Augensburg, a very tough, fast team, very much like E-Town and uh, Shazy did an incredible job. The defense held them to like, I don't think they even got two shots in the first half. But uh, hey, we're at tonight's game and uh, uh, we got a, a new game here, a non-league game. It's a, a good team that's showing up tonight. Let's, uh, let's see how this game goes. Well, it'll be a good test for them because um, it's nice to play teams from the south because, you know, at the end of the year, actually October 20th, the MVACs are here in Shay-Z um, at George Brandler Field, and they will be playing either a Bolton or a Johnsburg. So it's nice to get them at some point during the year. Absolutely, Joey. It's always nice to uh, see Shay-Z at this level uh, this time of the year. I mean, obviously, we're a little bit past <coughs> midpoint in the year. shay still undefeated. Uh, I think they've allowed about eight goals this year. Uh, I don't think the varsity has allowed more than three themselves, to be honest with you. Very, very tough team. Very, very strong team. Ranked number one in the league and in the actually Class D uh, <coughs> whole league. So um, at this point in the, in, in the uh, year, we're doing very, very well. Very strong. Just got to get past, past our injuries is the main thing. Well, you know, in any season, Stab, I mean, uh, Shazy has had success the last two years. But quite frankly, they they were pretty much injury prone, other than obviously the well-documented Corey Lewis getting hurt in the uh, semifinals and at the Final Four. But for the most part, they've been injury free the last two years. Yes, we've been very, very lucky. Um, this year just seems a little bit abnormal for Shazy, but we'll get through it. It just takes a little time to heal. The boys are strong. Uh, they're mentally there. They just got to get physically there. Uh, hopefully, before the playoffs start. Well, you know, the sign of any good uh, team stop is how they, they how they deal with adversity, how they deal with injuries. I mean, I'm going to change sports here, but look at the New York Yankees this year. They went through a rash of injuries, were down uh, five games out of first place, and then they end up winning the division by ten games. So good teams, the cream does rise to the top, um, and I think Shazy is deep. They have some good people that can come off the bench. I mean, we talked about this last time we did the game against E-Town. They lost three key players last year, but with the feeder program, they retooled very nicely. 
Absolutely, and uh, tonight you're seeing uh, Kenny Boer, who's taking uh, actually Jordan's spot. He's been strong all year. He 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 seems to get better and better with every game. So it's nice to have some depth in this team, uh, people that can come off the bench and fill the spots of players that are so important, and uh, hopefully they'll fill them tonight. Well, Kenny Boer has been a rock. I remember the uh, the first. Oh, here's a break for uh, Bolton, and uh, very nice play by Perry Latchmore. He got over there in time to clear it out. Smart play, knocked it out of bounds. Um, Kenny Boyer, if you remember back uh, two years ago at the final game uh, in the state championship, it was kind of actually funny because um, Rob put him in like in the final three minutes and he was just getting banged up there bad. I mean, uh, and then last year he was the mainstay of the defense that won a second state championship. Like, like you say, Joey, he's gotten stronger and stronger every game. Solid, solid player. The Shazy defense last year only allowed three goals all year long. This year, yes, they've allowed about eight goals, uh, two of them being penalty kicks. Uh, but actually, the varsity, I think, has only allowed one true goal through the whole year so far. Um, a lot of depth in this team, like we say. Right now, I'll tell you what, uh, Bolton's putting on a lot of pressure to Shazy and uh, some different players in there for Shazy, and it's actually making a pretty nice game. Yeah, it's been a real good game. Uh, Bolton has uh, definitely come to play. Shazy, their trademark, you know, keeping the ball on the ground. There was a nice feed there over to Evan Green. Uh, just knocked away, and the ball will be called a good defensive play and pushed it out for only a, a, a throw in. So good defense by Bolton. Uh, but Shazy, their trademark game is keeping the ball on the ground, uh, moving it around. Looks That could be a corner. Nope. Sent to the center. Ryan, oh my god, did he load up, but the defensive player was there for Bolton, did a nice job in deflecting it. Kyle Fountain trying to get it to Ryan, and Bolton wisely just clears it out. Lattimore has the ball. Sends it to midfield. Casey Trombley back to Kenny Blair. Again, Shazy does a very good job with their one time and pass uh, stop. Yes, they do. That's that's their game. When they can control the ball on the ground, they look so good. And they're, I mean, the short passes. Rob's done a phenomenal job with them. They're oh, oh. showing off the ball. Corey Ellis just drilled the far goal post, uh, and then a shot by Stetson Fields. Uh, it was brought to my attention that Nolan Ryan is literally three goals away from setting the section scoring record, and he is only a junior. This guy has been just a phenomenon. I, I, I just can't imagine. The guy's a junior. He's going to crush the record. I mean, obviously, next year as a senior, he's going to add more and more goals. This guy is going to set the pace for years and years to come. Chris Kondek set the pace uh, probably 10 years ago for Shazy. Uh, Seymour passed it last year. And, and Nolan, one year later, is going to pass it, and then he's going to set the mark, and I don't think it's going to be, I don't think anybody's going to pass this record for 10 or 15 more years. It's going to be have to be a phenomenal player that's going to do it. Well, you know, Stab, I, I mean, Shay Z side, we've seen a lot of great players through the years, but we've seen it in other teams, and Northeastern's had great players through the years. Uh, Peru, uh, Beatmantown, all have good players, but I tell you, Nolan Ryan is something special. Um, Somebody like him comes along like once in a lifetime, at least at, in my lifetime anyway, because I've never seen anybody that good at this level. He's such a big-time player, and, and, and when you need it the most, whether it be a playoff game, whether it be playing for first place, whether it be playing for the, the championship for the NBAC uh, state championship, Who's scoring the goals? I mean, it's, it's Nolan Ryan. He finds a way to put him in. He's a big-time player. He'll put him in backwards, frontwards, sideways. It doesn't matter. He's going to find the goal. Well, you know, last night in Augensburg, of course, uh, Jacob Spiegel was out. And, and Jacob, as we refer to him many times, is the field general out for Shazy at the midfield level. He was out. So Coach McAuliffe takes Ryan out of the striker position, puts him at midfield, and what's he do? He scores two goals and gets an assist. Just shows you it doesn't matter where you put him on the field, he adapts to that position. It was really funny last night too. We were listening to some fans there last night saying, who are these guys and can you believe that they're a Class, B team, or a class D team? What are they doing here? <coughs> and another gentleman said, well, they're the, uh, they're the state champions two years in a row. And all of a sudden they started scoring and they're like, can you believe these guys? These are a Class D team. It just doesn't make sense that there's just so much talent here. Well, they're fun to watch, but Bolton has come here to play tonight. Um, 
we've outshot them three to one, but they had a beautiful shot early on, uh, which Jacob Beeman. And speaking of Jacob Beeman, he played a beautiful game last night, and he only had three shots, but there were three quality shots on him. And the one shot that sticks in my head was when he was full out going to the right side, stopping it from going into the upper upper uh, right hand corner. It was definitely the best save he's made all year long. Uh, Jacob Beeman played a phenomenal game last night against a very very good quick team. And, uh, we, you know, there were some people concerned about Jacob uh, being in goal, to be honest with you. Uh, it's his first year in goal. Uh, but, boy, last <coughs> night he, uh, I think he, he gained a little confidence in a lot of people that were in the stands. <coughs> Bolton on the attack right now. They go to the far wing, Trombley on number four. Ball's clear to the center, and of course, Kenny Boer, we say his name a lot. He's very active on the defensive end for Shazy. Nice little push by Ellis over to Ryan. Ryan punches it up to Stetson. And Stetson Fields last night did a phenomenal job for Shazy uh, because when Nolan Ryan went back, Stetson Fields stepped into his spot, and Stetson scored two goals last night. Stetson is so much fun to watch. I mean, he's got footwork that's just incredible. Little short guy, I'll tell you. He doesn't have much size, but give him the ball and he can dance around it. And uh, he loves to play around with uh, the defenders and show his stuff. He's got a lot of, a lot of quick moves. Real fun to watch. Well, right now, Perry Latchamore has the ball, and there's another player that stepped up from last year, had a big role to fill, and he's done a phenomenal job this year, Stop. Absolutely, Joey. Um, He's, he's had some great games. Uh, he's really matured throughout the, the, uh, the year. He's getting better and better with every game. Uh, he's going to be a phenomenal player in the years to come, too. Nice move by Evan Green. Did a little scissors play there. And deked out the uh, un-Russian uh, player from Bolton and gets it up to Ellis. Ellis has some room. Pushes it over to Ryan. Ryan making the move. Oh, nice play by the goalie on non-Russian Nolan Ryan. Corey Ellis getting control, making some nice moves. Ellis gets a shot on net and a good save from the goalie. We've gone almost well, almost 12 minutes here in the first half, and it's been a very entertaining first half. Bowen has definitely showed up to play. Uh, they didn't come on this field to lay down, and and uh, some good competition for Shazy early stub. Yeah, they're doing a, a, a very good job, Bolton. Uh, Shazy getting a few shots on that, but nothing testing yet. Uh, they got to get a little bit more inside, and uh, they'll, they'll get one. They're, they're coming. It's just a, it's slow coming. Uh, they're losing. I mean, they're missing a few uh, key players out there tonight, and uh, you can kind of see it's a little bit different. But, uh, hey, they're doing a phenomenal job. Bolton's holding their own. Got to give them credit. Well, this is a good game for Shazy to have the players in these different positions because you never know. You get the deeper you go in the playoffs, somebody could get hurt. It's nice for these guys to get this type of experience because, quite frankly, they may need it as they move along in the playoffs. Absolutely, Joey. Oh, what a nice shot. A little bit high. Um, but yes, uh, it is nice to be able to switch some players around, move them around the field a little bit, let them play some different positions, give them experience. Uh, it, it only shows your strength. I mean, this team is so deep and so talented. Uh, you could almost put any player anywhere on this team, and, and they're going to come through for you. They're, they're so close, this team. I mean, they're not only uh, a soccer team, but they just, you know, they love each other as individuals. They're over having uh, dinner with each other at nighttime and talking about games and what they can do to win. These guys want, they have heart like you can't believe. Uh, losing is not an option with these guys. Well, you know, Stab, I, as you were talking, I, I noticed Casey Trombley out there banged a couple guys, and he's just playing hard, but that kid is one strong kid, and, boy, when when kids hit him, they just bounce off him. Yeah, last night he got a yellow card, actually, and uh, it was so funny to watch him. He didn't even come within probably five feet of the gentleman, but he just went to kick the ball, and he's so strong that when he kicked the ball, he actually kicked the ball and the player, and the player just flew his feet just flew underneath him and, and you know he got a yellow card for it which is you know the ref was there I mean it's his call whatever but it was I, I didn't think it was a yellow card call but he is just a strong strong player that's why I call him Casey the Wall Trombley. <laughs> well yeah the play you're talking about Stop. the guy ran into Casey and fell down I mean Casey was just there and uh, the ref gave him a card uh, but it's just that Casey's so strong the guys just fall when they hit him and uh, he's a rock back there on the defense for us Go, 
Well, we've gone 15 minutes into the game. The game is scoreless. Uh, Shazy does have the edge in shots, 6-1. to one. Um, And Bowen, uh, they're holding their own early here with this high-powered offense of Shazy. Ball cleared to midfield, and Casey Trombley right there. Has it over to Ryan. Ryan over to Evan Green, who one times it to Fields. Fields trying to control it, loses it. Evan Green goes flying in, but controlled by Bolton. Kenny Ware playing the uh, stopper position tonight. Over to Trombley. Trombley a little far. Tried to get over to Evan Green, but knocked out. Evan Green with the throw in. Goes to center field. They find Nolan Ryan. Ryan trying to hit fields. And Nolan is in the midfield position tonight. Yeah, Joey, you can see that Shazy's definitely controlling the play here. Um, they just need a little spark, uh, somebody to set up up front. Um, obviously, Nolan Ryan playing a little bit out of his position, but last night he did a phenomenal job. Uh, he's just, uh, obviously, he's the big goal scorer, and he's got a rocket for a leg. Uh, they all they need to do is set him up either at the top of the uh, key. Uh, I call it the key, but the top of the the uh, 18, yard line. 18 yard line and let him go or uh, set up Stetson. They got a lot of people that could put in the goal. Well, I wonder if they got the tired factor working. Again, this is their third game in three days, and two of the games were road trips. So I wonder if that has effect on the guys today. I mean, they're controlling the game, but I'm just thinking an individual standpoint that they got to be somewhat tired. There's no question about it. I mean, three games in uh, just a few nights, very sore muscles happening here. Uh, I think they're going to very much enjoy having tomorrow off and get ready for screwing on Monday. There's good pass work, Trombley to Fields, Fields over to Evan Green trying to push up to Baker. And Shazy's very good at their one-time passes, uh, and that's their trademark, keeping the ball on the ground. And, and when you control the midfield, you control the game. Absolutely, Joey. This is, this is what Shazy needs to do with every team that they play. You cannot play the boot and run game. That's the old way of playing soccer. Now it's the short game, the triangle game, the short passes on the ground. You have a lot more control on the ground. Uh, when you put the ball in the air, it's very, very hard to control. Well, right now you have Corey Ellis trying to, to get by the uh, the Bolton defender, which was uh, number 23, who did a good job on him, and that would have been Luke Shane for Bolton. Uh, did a nice, and he's still doing a nice job trying to contain Ellis. And it will be a uh, Shazy throw in. Evan Green will take it for Shazy. We've gone 17 minutes into the game. And, and you know what, Stop! It's actually been a while since we've gone 17 minutes into the game, and Shazy has not scored a goal yet. It's very surprising, Joey. Um, Shazy has averaged about six goals per game, so uh, they're way off pace. But uh, hey, when they come on, they come on in streaks. Like we say, there's a little bit different team in there tonight and a lot of vacant muscles, so uh, this game could be a lot closer than we expect. Well, Bowen is playing well. They're showing some skill out there. They're playing inspired soccer. Uh, the coach has just subbed in, trying to put some fresh legs in there. Joey, what is their record uh, this year, Bolton? You know, Stop, I don't know. I've been reading the paper. I did ask Coach McCullough earlier. He did not know. Um, but I know that they're one of the top teams uh, in the South, and quite frankly, this could be the team providing Shazy gets there to the NVAC game. Uh, they could be playing each other again later in the year. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, I like to see Shazy play some uh, qualified teams, and uh, I'm sure that this could be one of them. It's very possible. Uh, I don't get to see a lot of Southern League games, but uh, uh, this team is showing some spirit here tonight, and it might be a, a fine team to play later on. Well, right there, uh, Nolan Ryan was just kind of mugged. They double teamed him and took him down. So Shazy will have the direct kick. Shazy setting up within the box right now, and it's almost it's almost like a corner kick at this point. Uh, and I think it might be Ellis, if I'm not mistaken, taking the kick out there for Shazy. There's movement in the box. Bowen's trying to pull Shazy offside. Shazy's trying to strategically go in. Oh, there's a shot in dangerous play, and uh, Bowen dodges a the bullet there. And you know, Stop, as this game progresses, the closer it stays as time goes on, the more confidence that Bolton will build up. I mean, they got to be quite pleased, almost at the 20-minute mark, to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shazy, 0-0, zero -to -zero, with Shazy with all the credentials that they have coming into this game. I think their coach has got to be very, very happy. Uh, usually by now, I mean, in most games anyway, Shazy's ahead by a goal or two. And, uh, hey, this defense of uh, Bolton's doing a phenomenal job uh, getting the ball upfield, challenging Shazy, and hats off to him. 
and again Bolton is uh, subbing in and again I think the uh, strategy for the uh, Bolton coach is to get his players in and out and and hopefully uh, tire the uh, the first string of Shazy. I think he's got to know they've had three games in three days and and figuring they might have that tired factor in, involved here and uh, he's been subbing absolutely pretty freely here in the first uh, 20 minutes of the game. They got some uh, players with some fancy footwork here. It's kind of inspiring here tonight. Uh, it's nice to see some people with some skill and some uh, ability to give Shazy some pressure. Well, you know, as always, Thaw, when you look across the way, it's always nice to see the fan base that comes to a Shazy game, and it's no different tonight. Uh, Shazy has great support for their, their soccer program at the boys' and girls' level. Uh, we did the girls' game earlier, Calvin and I, and uh, there were quite a few fans here for that game, if not as many as we see now. And what's amazing is uh, since I, I'm not sure what time soccer started here today, about 10 o'clock this morning or whatever. Ooh. I think we might be looking at a penalty kick here. Oh, nope. nope. it's going against uh, Bolton. It's going against Bolton. Wow. Okay. Shazy got the call there. I, I kind of saw it the other way. Well, we were lucky. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but... Uh, it could have been uh, quite interesting, but anyway, uh, as I was saying, uh, this uh, soccer field has been full since about uh, 10 o'clock this morning. It's just amazing the amount of people that have come through Shazy and uh, seen how many games uh, have been played here all day long. Uh, it's, uh, I think the snack bar is probably going to set a record today for <laughs> what they're selling between hot dogs, hamburgers, and french fries. It's going to be incredible. Well, talking earlier with Calvin on the camera here, equally impressive. In Moores, there's another tournament going on, and there were 40 teams at the lower level. I don't know how many Shazy sent up. I think it was double figures. Uh, so you had a bunch of teams out in Moores, and the parking lot there was crazy. They were playing on three separate fields. That's how big that tournament was. And yet here in Shazy, you had the same thing. So soccer is a very popular sport in the North Country. Uh, and, and what that shows you is that there's a strong feeder program for all these towns. Absolutely, Joey. And I'll tell you what, soccer is going to become the number one sport in the USA, I would say within the next 10 years, I think probably baseball and football are uh, one and two, but uh, you're going to see it grow and grow in Europe. It's just absolutely huge right now, and it, it, it's coming this way. And mark my word, uh, number one sport within the next 10 years will be soccer. See, Stop, I don't know about that. I mean, it just seems at the pro level, they just can never seem to get it off the ground where there's that kind of interest. I think at the high school level and the college level, there's no doubt you see that type of uh, interest. But for some reason, the, the U.S. has not, uh, I don't know, warmed up to it as a professional sport yet. And you may be right with your prediction. And if you are, I'll call you Madam Cleo. Well, thank you very much. And just have your money ready because you're going to owe me. <laughs> well, time will tell, Sa, but uh, I, I can tell you this, the level of soccer has picked up over the last five to six years because of the feeder programs from all the towns. And, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting when you go to Moores and see, I think Moores had, I think Calvin said, what, 16 teams? 16 teams. Moores put 16 teams out there. That's a phenomenal amount of teams to put out there. Shazy has about that about the same with their different programs that they have working here. Um, and then what you notice when you see that is the level, the skill level of these kids. I mean, I watched these kids play today. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of soccer today. And you're seeing skill that we never had back when we went through high school. Absolutely not, Joey. And, and to be honest with you, um, as a supervisor of the town, we had 19 different youth teams this year. 19 different youth coaches. That's an incredible amount of, of, of soccer coaches. And, and like over 350 students playing soccer. So they're starting them at five, six years old. Uh, what a great way to teach them the basics of soccer and teach them the skills that they're going to need when they get to this level. Well, it's funny that you say that. I was talking to Joe Southwick today uh, at the uh, Morris Field and he said he talked to you earlier and that you threw that number at him. He goes, Joey, I don't think you guys had 350 kids in Shay Z, much less have them on the soccer program. He goes, no wonder you guys retool every year. And he goes, I don't see you missing a boat in the near future. He goes, because you have so many kids involved. Yeah, it's just a phenomenal uh, effort by all the parents and all the coaches. And uh, I mean, Shazy lives and breathes soccer. Uh, everybody wants to get involved. Uh, and it's, it's become a year-around sport. I mean, these, these uh, varsity players play, whether it's uh, on this field, they get into the winter soccer, they play indoor soccer, it just never quits. Okay, Bradley Hansen has just come out of the game. Um, 
Referee Kaiser said he had to have something on his brace, and uh, Evan Green went into him. Stop. We're 25 minutes into this first half, and there has not been a goal yet. Uh, we have outshot him 8-1. to one. We have controlled the game. Um, but still no score yet in this game on this beautiful fall night in uh, George Brendler Field. Very surprising, Joey. Um, we need to uh, have uh, somebody step it up here. Yeah, we've had our opportunities, a couple weak shots. Nothing major yet, though. Nothing of real threat. So uh, uh, we're going to have to see what happens. Uh, they're going to have to step it up a little bit. I'm sure uh, Coach McAuliffe is going to have a nice talk with them at halftime. Maybe uh, not quite as stern as he did at the E-Town game, but uh, he'll, he's going to juice them up a little bit and say, hey, let's kick it up a notch and let's put this thing in a net. Well, the difference between this game and the E-Town game, quite frankly, E-Town overall outplayed us the first half. That's not happened here, but we just have not had a chance to find the back of the net. And, I mean, Bowen is really one break away from taking the lead of this game. Absolutely, Joey. And, and uh, uh, they're putting up a phenomenal defensive effort so far. Uh, we got, like I say, we got some players in here that are not our normal first string players, but they're doing a very, very good job. It's taking a little bit longer. Uh, it's not our high-powered offense that we normally have, but uh, hey, uh, it's a long ways from over. Uh, maybe it'll be a very, very close game. Who knows? Well, you know, quite, quite frankly, from last night's game, the only real change that we have is that Jordan Spiegel is not the in the back of the uh, defense for Shazy. Um, Kenny Ware moved over, and Galen Trombley came in his place, um, took Kenny's place. But the offense is no different than what it was last night. Yeah, I'm not sure what's really going on. Uh, like you say, hey, Bolton's playing a great defense. Uh, they're playing a good ball game. They're keeping it close. And uh, I think that... Uh, it could be very interesting, or once uh, Shazy starts uh, scoring, they usually go in spurts. So it, it, we'll have to see what happens. But look at that! Look at that ball movement from Shazy. Uh, one timers had three, four passes in a row, controlling the field. And it, you know, if they keep this up, it's just a matter of time, unless Bolton does get that break. Because at this point, it seems like Bolton's playing for that opportunistic goal. Yeah, I guess you're right, Joey. Um, it's just I think Shazy is looking a little bit flat tonight. They're just they're not quite as sharp. They're not quite as up. I think that uh, you know they got to get themselves a little riled a little bit. Uh, sometimes when you when you play a team and you you get a little complacent and you're just not up for it quite as much, uh, it's a little bit harder to come by. The scoring a little bit harder to come by. But hey, it'll take some time. They need to get a couple in there and juice themselves up a little bit. Well, I'm still going to go back to what we talked about earlier. I think it's three games in, in three days. And uh, I know they're young young, young men, if you will, but uh, that would tire anybody out. Um, whether you're 16, 17, or 18, or, or 22, you're going to be tired playing three games. And, I mean, and let's face it, you're running for 40 minutes per half. Absolutely, Joey. Well, let's see if they can get it going. Well, Evan Green's going to try to do something here. He's got the ball on the right side. Uh, but good defense by number 23 for... Um, for Bolton, which would be Luke Shane, who took uh, Evan Green off the ball. And but Shazy is uh, a little flat on the offensive end. Trombley lets the ball go out, throws it in quick over to Evan Green. Nobody on him. And he pushes it over to uh, Corey Ellis. Ellis has it on a Russian uh, defensive player. And uh, number 23 for uh, Bolton has been running around there. It's actually, it's number 30, um, Wayne Rich. And uh, he's a big guy, and he made a nice defensive play there. Ball goes to the open field. Latchmore has the ball, nobody on him. But number seven, uh, which is Ben Gaddy for Bolton, gets on Perry Lattimore, Latchmore really quick. And the uh, 18-yard line, Ellis trying to get the ball. And Bolton is doing a very nice job tonight playing defense. They clear it out. And number 10, um, Harry Caldwell did a nice job keeping that in. trombley has got the ball, tries to half volley it over to uh, Ben Baker, but controlled by by Bolton. Trombley disrupts the play, gets it over to Trombley, back to uh, Kenny Boyer. Kenny Boyer sends it to the center uh, field, or the midfield, as Calvin corrected me the first game when I did the girls game, it's the midfield. If I say center field, it's probably baseball, but we're talking soccer here. And uh, Ben Baker, or I'm sorry, I said Ben, other against E-Town too, it's Jason Baker with the ball, and uh, he... Trombley one times it over to Nolan Ryan, but number four for Bolton, Cody Kober did a nice job taking away from Ryan. But Ryan gets the ball back. Oh, 
Well, he went down hard last night against Augensburg. He was taken down hard. Stop. Yeah, I'm very surprised actually that he was playing tonight. I didn't think he would be playing. Uh, he hurt his back last night a little bit, but he's tough. They they recover very quickly. They're young kids. Uh, you know, it's nice to see him out there tonight. You know, coming into this game, you know, you come into George Brenler Field, you got the lights, you have a lot of fans, um, you have the credentials of Shazy being number one undefeated, two-time defending state champs, and quite frankly, Bolton hasn't budged on that tonight. It's like, that doesn't bother them. No, it doesn't. Oh, there's going to be a goal. Oh, no. Nolan Ryan, hey, he got in there, but he headed it over the net. The Bolton faithful across the way are very appreciative of that. Anytime you can keep a prolific score from putting it back of the net is pretty exciting, Stubb. Absolutely, Joey. That was uh, the best chance we've had all night long, and uh, looked like they were definitely going to get on the board, but it didn't happen. Well, we're 10 minutes left in the first half. There has been no score, which is uh, highly unusual for this high potent offense of Shazy. They have controlled the game. It's 10 shots to one, uh, two shots and corner kicks to none for uh, Bolton. Um, but the bottom line is it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Hey, Harry, drop! Harry, drop! Stetson Fields working hard in the box. Does not get it. They're stopping the clock. Somebody's hurt for Bolton. Or no, what are they doing here? A yellow card to one of, what I what did I missed up? Um, I don't really know, Joey. I'm not sure. I didn't see what happened. I was concentrating on the right-hand side of the field, and I think that it was just kind of a verbal comment maybe the player made. I didn't see any physical contact or anything. Not sure what happened. I'm assuming it was probably language. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Okay, we just heard it from Kaiser. Attacking. Attacking from behind with no ball in play, no ball near him. Okay, Joey. Well, he obviously can do that. Uh, well deserved uh, yellow card. Uh, obviously taking down some players, so it'll cost them for the next uh, few minutes. Okay, Baker controlling the ball. Jason Baker had some room, gets it over to Ellis. Ellis keeps the ball to his feet. Pushes it through to Baker. Again, Shazy's moving the ball well, and and it's like Bolton will give up yardage, but then they get they, they tighten up when they get around the uh, the net stop. Yes, they do. Uh, and that was very close to being a penalty shot there. That was almost a trip in the box, but uh, the ref let it go. Uh, it'll definitely be a corner kick for Shazy though. All right, uh, Brad Hansen is back in the game, and Evan Green is coming off. And Brad Hansen, um, being a sophomore, and we've seen him at the lower levels, he's a guy that can find the back of the net if he gets an opportunity. Yes, he's done very, very well for Shazy. He scored three or four goals this year, a young guy. Oh, nice header. There it is. And who else scores stop except? Nolan Ryan. <laughs> Nolan Ryan on a beautiful feed. I'm not quite sure who sent that across. It might have been Ellis. But Nolan Ryan comes in, heads it in. He is now two goals away from the state record. Unbelievable player. He just loves to find the back of the net. Great head by Nolan Ryan. He's done it over and over and over again. He can just find the back of the net every time that ball's crossed. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal goal. Well, I was right. Uh, Gary Kaiser came over, and it was an Ellis feed, which is a beautiful feed from Ellis. But sitting here, stop, as you saw the play develop, and you saw Ryan coming up with the header, you almost knew that it was pay dirt for the, uh, for the uh, Eagles of Shay Z. Uh, very exciting. It's, it's about time they get on the board. It, it was a long time coming. Definitely a little bit flat tonight. There's no question about it. You can kind of see they're just not pumped up like they usually are. Uh, but maybe that'll uh, turn, it, turn it up a little bit for them. Well, that could be the goal that breaks Bolton's back. Um, you know, they've been playing even with them. And, but, you know, if Bolton has any chance, they got to do more than get one shot off in uh, 32 minutes. Absolutely, Joey. Uh, obviously, they haven't. Uh, this defense of Shazy is very, very strong. Even with some major players out, they, they continue to be uh, a very, very big threat. They can get the ball out when they need to get it out and uh, protect their goalie. 
I mean, right there, the ball was passed three or four times, and the ball never hit the ground. They were just heading it back to each other. So whether it's their head or their feet, they're moving the ball very well. And it seems like they got a little inspired on that goal, that they picked their intensity up a little bit. Yeah, this game's picking up a little bit, and it's nice to see. Uh, I, I've seen Shazy play many, many, many times, and, and they're, like we say, we're a little bit flat tonight, but they're picking it up a little bit. Seems like that set a little fire in them a little bit, and uh, uh, they're getting a little bit hungrier. Oh, well, Ellis trying to take the ball away. Some movement going on. Bolton thought they should have got the call, but um, Kaiser saw it the other way. And basically what happened, the guy was down. He's trying to kick the ball with his feet while he's down, and it was a dangerous play. Ellis is calling for 10, and Kaiser's telling him to back up, or he may count it off, but it's about 10 yards. I think this is a set play that we're going to do here, Stab. Well, I guess not. <laughs> but it was a nice shot. hit the top of the net, but uh, it went high on the goal, and that could have been dangerous a little bit lower. Absolutely. That was a very nice shot by uh, Corey Ellis. Another three feet lower and over to the right or left, one way or the other, and that could have been definitely some pay dirt for Shazy. Well, Casey Trombley, you aren't going to move him. I'll tell you that right now. He's a tough kid. And over to the mainstay back there, Kenny Boyer pushes it up, but a little too far for Baker and controlled by Bolton. Bolton heads it up. Trombley volleys it up in the air. It's anybody's ball. And that would be Ryan trying to get it, but controlled by Bolton. Casey Trombley has the ball. Pushes it over to Lattimore. Lattimore one times it up to Ryan, just goes over his head, but Ellis controls. Ellis has Fields, and he has uh, Brad Hansen on the right side, but he tries to load up. And a good play from uh, Bolton, number 23 for Bolton, which would be, that would be uh, Luke Shane and Corey Ellis mixed it up there a little bit, but the play goes on. Jason Baker one times it over to Ellis. Ellis chips it in, trying to hit Stetson Fields. And boy, you got to be careful. He's fast, and he has a lot of nice footwork when he gets to that 18-yard line stop. Yes, he does, and I'll tell you, uh, he's done a phenomenal job for Shazy this year. Uh, Stetson Fields, very, very foot fancy, and uh, he can make you look quite foolish if he wants to. So he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, he scored quite a few goals in the last few games. A little short player. Uh, not quite as tall as the other players, but boy, he's got some footwork. And in, and in this sport, that's what you got to have is speed and footwork. Well, some nice playing between Trombley, Baker, and uh, Hanson. The ball just got away from Hanson, but they moved the ball well. It was just a little uh, Baker tried to hit Hanson, went a little too far. Some sub and taking place, and um, Bolton will have the throw in at the midfield mark. We got. About a little over four minutes to go here in the first half. Shazy's ahead 1-0. Uh, there were 12 shots on net to one of Bolton. And that was early in the game. And it was a bullet, but it was right at Beeman. And he made a great save. And the corner kicks are 3-0 for Shazy. So, again, it's one of those games where Shazy's dominating. But I think it's just a matter of time for they increase those goals. Oh, a little offsides there. Joey uh, Hansen got a little bit in front of the defense. and. Kind of too bad because Shazy was uh, moving the ball very well. Well, a nice trap from Baker, who pushes it back to Casey Trombley, slides it over to Perry Lattimore. And typical Shazy fashion, um, three, four passes, and they try to hit Ellis. Ellis, I guess, had a little collision, but no call made. And it will be Bolton's ball. Uh, you hear the Bolton uh, players over there saying, four minutes left, we can hold them. So they're not even thinking offense. They just want to keep us off the board. Yep, Joey, I think that uh, Shazy needs to put one in before halftime, though. We need a little bit of insurance. Uh, I don't think Rob's going to be very happy with a one nothing lead uh, at the half. Uh, he's definitely going to have some words with these players and tell them to let's spark it up a little bit, let's crank it up. We need some goals. Well, you know, stop. Times have changed because I remember when I was playing one nothing games or one nothing scores one games. You know, and and with Shay Z, you expect that in the first ten minutes of the game, much less a half. Absolutely, Joey, and uh, uh, I, I definitely think that Shay Z's got to crank it up a notch. I think they're a little complacent right now. They're very very flat. Um, I think they're getting tired. It's a good thing they got tomorrow off, but uh, they can't rest on this one nothing lead because this could be turned into a disaster. Well, you know, you know, you're know, you right. They got one day off, and they're back at it Monday. They got to go down to Scroon Lake, which, again, is another hour and a half trip for these guys. One thing in the MVAC, you do do a lot of traveling, uh, unlike the CVAC. 
a lot of traveling and it definitely tires you out, tires your body out. It's uh, hard to get up for a game when you get off a bus after an hour and a half trip. So uh, you, you definitely got to have the mental attitude that uh, you want to win and, and you got some spark and uh, the desire's got to be there. Well, this game's far from over, but just to look ahead a little bit, uh, next Friday they got Westport coming to George Brendler Field, and and Westport played an inspired game against Shazy down in Westport. Uh, Shazy won that game four to one. Uh, it was a game dominated by Shazy, but early in the second half, Westport scored and tied the game, which made it very interesting. Absolutely, Joey. Every team wants to beat Shazy. I mean, after uh, 46, is it right now? I think we're pretty. Yeah, th th I think that's probably what it is. 46 wins in a row. I mean. They just want to beat Shazy in the worst way, and you can't blame them. Uh, it's going to be quite a feat uh, of any team that does beat them. And, you know, Shazy's got to make sure they're on top of their game and hungry every single game because, uh, you know, one little drop of the hat and it's going to be a big disappointment. And well, hopefully it doesn't come at the wrong time in a playoff <laughs> game where it totally knocks you out of it. Yeah, well, that is true. But, you know, 46-game winning streak. And, you know, at some point, I mean, Shazy is going to lose a game. I mean, at, you know, nobody wins forever. And when that does happen, that will be headlines in the paper, I can guarantee you. Absolutely, Joey. So we, and we definitely don't want it to happen at playoff time. Well, I don't think we want to have it happen tonight. You know, I mean, we want to ride this uh, wave of uh, of success that we've had as long as we can. And uh, we got a little over a minute left, and um, it looks like we might go into the half of the one nothing lead stop. Yeah, and I'll tell you, this is going to be, uh, uh, I think, a little bit disappointing for uh, Rob. And uh, I'm sure, like we said, he's going to uh, have a nice talk with him at halftime, spark him up a little bit. Uh, I can remember uh, a few years ago, our last loss was a one nothing loss to E-Town. And it was the best thing that ever happened to Shazy. Uh, it was about four games before playoffs. And after that game, Shazy never let another score go in. And they never lost another game. And we haven't lost since then. So, you know what? It wouldn't be a bad thing for Shazy to lose, you know, maybe at this time of the year, just to give him a little notice saying, hey, you guys can be beat. So let's not get too complacent. you got to get up every single game and get everybody up every single game. Well, you know, I'm watching the uh, the Bolton bench, and these guys are – they are – very happy. They're only down one nothing at the half. So for them, they've had a very good half uh, to be down to the uh, two-time defending state champs, one nothing, and we got 10 seconds left. So there'll be no more goals this first half, and it will be interesting to see what the second half brings us. Dub. Absolutely, Joey. Especially after playing uh, a very high-power team last night and winning four nothing, and to only be, you know, up one nothing at halftime. Uh, against Bolton, uh, nothing against Bolton. They played a wonderful, wonderful game. Defense has done incredible. Uh, but I got to believe that Rob's a little disappointed and uh, he's uh, going to let people know about it. Well, I'd say he's disappointed, but let, the facts are they've totally dominated this game. The E-Town game, they were outplayed the first half, so there's a difference in the game. I think he's just going to basically tell the boys to settle down and stick a few goals in. But uh, we have the uh, future of Shazy ready to come out on the field, and uh, Calvin will tape that, I'm sure, and we'll come back for the second half. Uh, you think you just pay two bucks? I'm sure your destination fees like five bucks. I realize that. I said, okay, I want some. And put a lot of cash There's a the halftime show. Uh, what they're going to do is uh, get probably three games going. I'm not sure if this is the peewee level or what exactly what level we're looking at. They're all about Stop Spiegel's height out there. The what? The kids are all about Stop Spiegel's height out there. The oh, thank you very much, so Calvin. <laughs> Jeez, I really appreciate that. We've been picking on Stetson Fields there all day. I just yeah. thought... Uh, Justin's short, but boy, he's got some wheels and he's got some talent. The guy does a phenomenal job. He just goes to show you in soccer, you don't need to be tall. You just need to have some wheels and, and be fancy. Sometimes the closer to the ground you are, the better you, your opportunities. So they're chopping down uh, 15 minutes and uh, we're expecting that there'll be three games going here. But as we saw during the girls game, it uh, took a while to, to get things rolling. And once they got rolling, they didn't want to stop. Fun to watch this, Calvin, because th this is the future of Shay Z. And uh, you're looking out here, and you're probably seeing the next Nolan Ryan out there. Next Stetson Fields, who knows?
How about Helen Giroux? Wow, uh, broke the record this year. What a phenomenal job she's done. Senior year. That's a, a wonderful uh, thing to be able to tell your kids for years and years to come. And you broke the all-time Class D scoring champion. I mean, that's... Section 7. That's unbelievable. Uh, all classes, Section 7 scoring champion. Oh, these kids must be the elite team here. They got their names on the shirts and everything here. It's Uh, they got cones, those are the goals. Yeah, but the, three or four different games. This is going to be interesting. I'm not sure the how games, to track or who's playing where. The games overlap a bit there. As you can see, soccer is alive and well in Shazy and throughout the North Country. As Joey has mentioned earlier today, we were at uh, the Moore's Recreation Field. Hundreds of kids participating in the third annual Luan Dragoon Roxy Dumas uh, Memorial Tournament. And uh, they were going with not three fields, but three sites. They had. Uh, Three or four games going at the uh, rec park near Route 11. Plus, they had games at the school and at the Moore's Fork site. So, they had all kinds of activity, a lot of volunteers. And a beautiful day to do it, too. It was a beautiful day in the North Country today, the last day of September. the game over this way. This is a, a big thrill for these kids. <clears throat> this is a, a huge field for people. And when we saw earlier the mites and the mini mites out there. The, And obviously when you're talking this many kids, some of these kids will obviously never get the opportunity to play on this field as a, as a varsity performer. So this is uh, their opportunity to get out here because there's no way you can have the, this many kids when you funnel them all out in your uh, modified JV and uh, varsity program. Only a certain number can uh, actually make the squad, but when you've got a whole bunch to choose from, it sure makes it a lot easier to, to pick up a team of talented players. And at the youth levels, uh, it's uh, pretty much co-ed. I, uh, I wasn't convinced originally that uh, the younger girls could hold their own with the younger boys, but it's, I've sure been proven wrong. And I think it helps make the, uh, the girls stronger players by competing uh, against them nasty boys. So the ones that uh, do go on to play at the higher levels, uh, they've had uh, tougher experience because they've been playing uh, co-ed. 
with boys and girls. So it's a lot makes a lot more sense than having boys teams and girls teams. As you can see out there, the girls uh, are not taking a back seat to the boys. Now we have a save right here in front of us. When we look out here, we see soccer players. Stop looks out there. He sees future voters. <laughs> so someday these kids will be voting here. So well, I'm going to be out at halftime just shaking everybody's hand. <laughs> Handing out candy bars. <laughs> now, this is really exciting, Calvin, to see all these people out here, though. And it brings the parents out, uh, brings the sisters, brothers, everybody out to see you know, the future of Shady Soccer. And it's... Uh, the, you know, like we say, these, these are the, the kids that are going to become the Nolan Ryans and the Stetson Fields and the Jacob Spiegels and, and all these players that have contributed so much to uh, the championship teams over the years. And who out here is going to be the next one? You just you can see some, uh, some real talent out here, I'll tell you. It's exciting to see them. They can dribble very well. They're passing to their teammates. It's a lot of fun to watch. Well, the best thing is they're out here running around and enjoying themselves, doing something physical. If they weren't here tonight, uh, they'd be sitting at home, uh, most of them watching Hometown Cable, but a lot of them not doing something as constructive as that, you know, wasting their time playing video games or whatever. Here they're doing something athletic, and uh, even if they never make the team, they, this, this is good for them, even if they never get to the varsity level, because most of them won't. And most of these kids will not make the varsity level. You've only got so many openings, and. Only so many people can play. It definitely gives them a goal to shoot for. It. Yep. And Joey's back with the Freedom Fries. Uh, no, they're out of them. 180 pounds gone. 180, 180 pounds of fries. Uh, I don't want nachos. 180 pounds of fries gone. <clears throat> you know, all he's been doing is talking about the, the fries. Got me all excited about fries, and now shows up with nachos. 180 pounds, Calvin, gone. That's, uh, that's enough to make a Joey Trombley out of 180 pounds. <laughs> I think we got an injury here. And an ankle injury. <clears throat> We've still got four and a half minutes of this. Now, I do know they had some uh, playoff games there, so apparently all the Shay Z teams were beaten. Then, is that what you tell me, Joe? I don't know. The uh, <laughs> I know that team that Mars on had won their three games and went yeah, the medal round. Yeah, everything is. They didn't have any lights, so everything is done before dark. So that is true. So I was only trying to get you going. <laughs> I got the town supervisor going a few minutes ago there, so it's your turn. You, you got to get him going. He's in that public spot. Trying to get him so I can quote, you know, get him to say the wrong thing and I can quote it and be on Fox News tomorrow. i just like to quote that Cheesy has never been run better. <laughs> the town is running wonderfully, financially stable. <laughs> We're working on getting taxes down. Taxes are, yeah, you're going to raise the assessment so you can lower the taxes, right? <laughs> um, I like to say that I'm not the assessor. <laughs> <laughs> but if the assessor would raise tax, uh, raise the assessments by 25%, you could lower taxes by 5%. Oh, we just hope so. We work hard at keeping the spending down. That's our job. And making sure people have the necessities that they need. And to live comfortably in our wonderful town. Are you running in November against Ottawa? <laughs> no, I'm not. Is this a political year? <laughs> Politicians are never having off season, Joey.
the fields do overlap on time at times here. <laughs> Way over here. I'm just talking to myself here, Joey. Talking to all those hundreds and hundreds of viewers at home there watching this. Saying, why is he putting this on? Well, <laughs> I'm putting this on because these kids are out there and they might want to see themselves. We've only got about 30 seconds left in this activity. It's done. Halftime is done. We're back for more action and more of okay, Mr. President. Joey Trombley we'll and and the Thank supervisor. You, Thank you for calling. We are, we are. Oh. Oh. Jeez. All right, we've started the second half. Uh, Calvin was just changing the tape. He had that halftime festivities for you, so he had to change his tape here. We're 30 seconds into it, and Nolan Ryan is taken down just outside the 18-yard line. It will be a direct kick. And stop. you never know what these guys are going to do. They always have these different plays uh, set for this type of a situation. Yeah, they tried this play last night, Joey, and uh, they just missed. Uh, we had Corey Ellis go in all alone, and he just missed. Oh, nice shot by Ryan, but no good. But nice save by the <coughs> Bolton goalie. Yeah, Nolan uh, let it rip. Uh, we thought a play was being set up, but oh, Kenny Ware just flattened uh, number seven for Bolton, which was Ben Gaddy. And uh, Kenny Ware just flattened him, and it would be a direct kick uh, for Bolton. And so Bolton will be on the offensive here. 21 and 24 for Bolton, setting up Jack Riley and um, Chris Bliley. Riley and Bliley for Bolton. Nice header from uh, Kenny Boer over to a Corey Ellis, a non-Russian Corey Ellis. Nice movement. Uh, getting by the uh, defense. You know, it's like the first half, Bolting will, will give you some space, but then they tighten up when they get around the goal line. And uh, same thing. See how many guys they got back there boxing it in? It's almost like Bolton's playing for the one or 2 nothing uh, loss here. They have everybody back on the defensive end, and Shazy easily controls the ball with Latchmore over to Baker. Baker looking sideline. He finds uh, Kyle LaFountain. We haven't said his name much tonight, but the ball hasn't been on his side of the field. A beautiful cross. And uh, Evan Green trying to get in there. Cleared out, but Trombley out to get the ball. He'll take the throw in. Trombley down the line, intercepted by Bolton. <coughs> Ryan over to his cousin, Trombley, Galen Trombley. Galen and Nolan are cousins. Ryan making the move. And a shot just goes over the net. Another shot by Nolan Ryan. Uh, we're at 15 shots to one right here for the game. And we're about three minutes into the second half. And Shazy is ahead, one nothing uh, in the game right now, Stop. Yeah, Shazie's coming out a little bit better right now. They're passing uh, very nicely. Uh, just a nice shot by Nolan Ryan. A, a real rocket, just a little bit off. But uh, looks like uh, they're coming out a little bit stronger in the second half. They want to put some points on the goal, about Joey. Well, some nice movement by Casey Trombley. Two players down. And they called it against Green. Casey's down. That's not a good sign. He's walking it off. 
Kaiser making sure everybody's okay. Shazy setting up. Ryan looking for 10 yards. He's asking for 10. Ellis is asking for 10. Uh, Kaiser tells him to back up. I guess he's been doing this long enough to know what 10 yards is. And uh, Ryan will be ready to go. And again, Ryan just puts it right at the goalie. You know, the last night, Stop, they actually had a couple plays, and uh, so far we're seeing uh, Ryan just trying to, a uh, nice nice uh, trap by Trombley over to uh, Ryan. And uh, tonight he's just taking shots at the net. They aren't running those plays like we saw last night, Stub. Well, I think they have usually some uh, different players on there that are kind of used to that play and are not quite used to who's out there on the field tonight, so not sure quite what to do. So uh, they're just kind of playing it by ear, play by play right now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense uh, because it is definitely different than from what we saw last night. Not that it's wrong, it was just different than from what we saw last night. I mean, anytime you have Nolan Ryan taking a shot at net, that's not a bad thing. Uh, he has a, a knack for finding the back of the net. and uh, So maybe one of these times, if he gets another chance, it will find he'll find the back of the net there. But right now, Shazy is controlling the game with Evan Green with the ball. And almost like uh, from the first half, we have a little more intensity. But we're uh, balls cleared out for a corner kick but we're controlling the play when we're in the offensive zone absolutely Joe they look a little bit better right now uh, definitely controlling the play it's just a matter of time it looks like before we uh, put some more points on the board we definitely need some insurance well at the inter at the break I was uh, talking actually to one of the uh, Bolton coaches uh, for the girls team and he asked are the boys uh, holding back tonight or what they seem a little flat and I, and I said no I said basically they've three games in three days and I said they had, they've traveled and he goes well that makes a lot of sense he goes um, because they just don't look like the um, the team that we've played in the past and and again we were kind of hammering this I guess probably overkill but three days and uh, three games in three days is a lot Yes, it is, Joey. It definitely takes a lot out of the players. There's a lot of sore muscles out there, and uh, uh, it's definitely going to take a, an effect on the team. Um, definitely think that tomorrow is going to be a rest day. Everybody should lay low. If anybody wants to come over to uh, our house and uh, get in that hot tub and uh, stretch some muscles or whatever, <coughs> come on over. <laughs> well, anybody out there listening? That's anybody. Anybody <laughs> listening? Uh, we, 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 we take uh, parents too. Anytime, January, February, come on down to Stops. Bring a cup of chlorine and help yourself. Just, just have to be a registered voter in the Shazy. <laughs> well, if there's anything from all this, it will only make Shazy better because as you advance into the playoffs and you get it to that the higher level, your every game is a tough, tough game. And uh, you do have some uh, sore bodies the next day after a game especially at that level so this is probably some good training for them when they get to that point if they get to that point uh, this year absolutely Joey um, they seem to be doing okay they're, they're just kind of uh, taking it easy right now trying to set up plays uh, trying to get that open opportunity and uh, it'll, it might take some time Ooh, there's a nice little play by Evan Green but he get, did get called for the slide tackle well, again, at intermission, I was I was looking over where the players were sitting and where Coach McAuliffe was. Um, it seemed like a different halftime speech than the one uh, that E Town that he gave at E Town. And again, I think it is because the boys have controlled the game. It's just they haven't finished. Um, but what do you, what is there to get upset with other than you haven't finished? Uh, we got a trip on Trombley pushing him down, and he fell over the guy he pushed down, and he's called for the foul, and it is a direct kick, probably about the 25-yard uh, uh, line uh, for Bolton, maybe 30 now. The ball is just pushed back. But we're uh, eight minutes into the second half, and it's still one nothing. Yeah, Joey, uh, and this is a very dangerous situation for Shazy. I mean, I'm just not comfortable with this. It's one nothing. We're, uh, ooh, nice shot. Uh, you know, we're a little bit short of three-quarters of the way through the game. Um, we need some insurance goals. Uh, anything can happen at this point. Can you imagine if Bolton gets on the board and it's one-to-one? -one, uh, and and uh, that, that would be really interesting. I mean, these guys will be so fired up. Uh, anything can happen. Well, Casey Russ is coming into the game. And out for Bolton is number 14. Um, and that would be uh, Sean Fowl. And he had a bullet of a shot that just missed the net right there. But he's getting a little breather. And uh, Bolton has picked up their intensity a little bit. You hear the uh, Bolton faithful over there yelling encouragement to their players. Um, but the longer the game stays one nothing, the more confidence that Bolton gets. And um, who knows what can happen. 
Absolutely, Joey. I think the Shazy's definitely got to say, hey, we got to step it up a notch here and get a few points on the goal, then relax a little bit because it's just not happening right now. You can see they're very, very flat. Uh, the, their passes are not crisp. Uh, they don't have the intensity that they need, um, and this is where trouble begins. Nice play by Trombley to get it over to Evan Green, who pushes it over to Baker. Baker finds Ryan, the ever-dangerous Nolan Ryan. He chips it over to Kyle LaFountain. Shazy controlling the ball. LaFountain made some nice moves, but uh, he knocked it out himself. It will be a bolt and throw in. Lattimore sticks his ground and, and a good play there from Perry Lattimore. Over to uh, LaFountain who got it back to Baker who tried to hit Corey Ellis. It just went under his feet and goes harmlessly to the goalie. We're now almost 10 minutes into the second half and I think we got some rain coming now, Stubb. We went from a beautiful evening to rain right now and um, I guess we're fortunate we got some shelter. Well, actually, Joey, no, we predicted this. So we wanted a little rain. The, dry, the grass was a little dry, and we told, uh, we told the upper skies to make sure that it sprinkled a little bit on the field that we wanted to put a little bit of padding on the field. So we, we, we actually were predicting this, and actually tomorrow is supposed to rain all day. Well, you know, Stop, I heard you on the phone at intermission called Tom Messner and said, hey, what can you do for us? And uh, looks like meteorologist Tom Messner answered the call and gave you a little bit of rain. Absolutely. That uh, radar system that they have, Doppler radar, Storm Tracker 5000. I said, where is it, uh, Smiley? And uh, he came through for us. Well, we could use this rain on this field. It's been played on all day, so it could use a little bit of moisture. But it could wait for 20 minutes for the game to be done here, or 30 minutes, and it can rain all at once after that. But uh, the ball is back in play with Latchamore over to Jason Baker. Jason Baker back to Latchamore, and he tried to hit Nolan Ryan. But Kenny, uh, or Casey Trombley, has control of the ball. He gets it to Nolan Ryan. <coughs> oh, and Ryan is going down again. They got a hip check there by the big guy from uh, Bolton, Wayne Rich. Takes him down. And it seems like almost every game that Nolan plays, he hits the deck three or four times. Well, he's a high-intensity player, and uh, when you... When you play as hard as he does and uh, try to go through as many players as he does, you're bound to get taken down. Well, normally most games he's double or triple team. And, and actually nobody's really marking Nolan tonight, which I'm surprised because most teams try to, to double or triple team him. Uh, but he's he, they're giving him some space tonight, which I'm sure Nolan's kind of pleased to have that because he's normally marked pretty well. Well, I'm sure if he was playing up on the line, uh, they would definitely have somebody following him like a shadow. Uh, it's just that he's uh, playing the midfield tonight, so they just figure he's probably not a major scoring threat, but boy, they're wrong. That's for sure. It's going to be Shazy throw in, and they get it in quick. Ryan half volleys it back to uh, Evan or Corey Ellis, but controlled by Bolton. Casey Trombley shielding the ball. Oh, he slips on the wet field, and but he controls it, pushes it over to Trombley. Trombley controls it. He half volleys it over to Ryan. Ryan being challenged, made a nice move, got by that one one defender, pushes it back to Trombley. Trombley gets drilled by the defender, but he makes a nice pass to Stetson Fields. Ryan making the move. Shazy is controlling the ball. Uh, Bolton is on their heels. And the player goes down, which would be Evan Green. But it will be Shazy throw in. Throws it into the box of Fields. Fields has good ball control. Ball goes inside. Baker going at it hard. Knocks it off. What do we have here? Yep, knocks it off a Bolton defender. It will be a corner kick for Shay Z. This will be their fifth one of the game. Uh, the stats for the game so far are 16 shots to two for Shay Z. They lead 1-0. Uh, with those type of stats, they have controlled the, the tempo of the game, but they are not finding the back of the net like we're used to seeing on this high-powered offense. But that could change very quickly. Uh, when you have a high-powered offense, it can change quickly. All right, it'll be green ball. Well, stop. We're 14 minutes into the second half, and the uh, confidence level of Bolton is still pretty high. Uh, I think they're they're pleased to be down only one nothing at this time. 
I believe so too. They got to be very, very happy to be uh, down only one nothing to uh, Shazy at this point. Uh, I got, I got to believe that their coach is uh, thrilled. And, and like I say, this is a long ways from over. One little goal by Bolton could really, really make things a little scary here. Well, you know what it seems like? It seems like their strategy is to pack it in and to play for the opportunistic goal. And that's very dangerous uh, no matter what team you play when you try to play for that one goal or, to, you know, that one chance where you can stick it into the net. Uh, because basically the other team is just relentlessly on you the whole game. Absolutely, Joey. And, uh... It definitely makes it so tough for, for Shazy to get any kind of an opening at all to take a decent shot. And you can see that their whole defense is packed in the back. There's nobody up here, uh, you know, to take any kind of a, a lead pass or anything. They're just packing in the defense. Very difficult to score on that. Well, it's definitely a strategy, uh, but it's not a strategy to win a game. I don't think so either, Joey. I would never pay, play this kind of a strategy. You play to win. Uh, am I... Am I uh, mind when you when you play soccer, you, you put your best foot forward. You put your best players out there, and and, and you go for it. And you best team wins. I mean, you, 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 it's nice if you want to, you know, kind of keep for the papers or other teams saying that you got close to a, a high power team, but it, it doesn't put the W on the board. So you got to put anything you can forward, make your uh, team work hard, and uh, go for the win. Always go for the win. Well, that would be my philosophy. Well, Bolton has the ball. They're down in the Shazy end. They haven't been there much tonight, uh, but they're down there now. Latchamore uh, heads it over to LaFountain. Bolton has the ball. Oh, can, oh this could be dangerous. Oh, Galen Trombley. Something happened. Galen Trombley saved a shot, a direct shot on Jacob Beeman. A good defensive play. Perry Lattimore's down. This is not good. They're calling for the coach. Just what we don't need, Joey, is another hurt Shazy player. I mean, this week has just been brutal on Shazy team. Uh, one thing after another. Uh, Perry's been a solid uh, player all year long, and uh, Hopefully it's just something that's uh, temporary, but uh, it looks like he's hurting pretty bad out there. I didn't quite see the play because I was watching what was developed in front of the net. The uh, Bolton player had a shot. I mean, it looked like he had an open shot at Jacob Beeman at about the penalty mark area, and Galen Trombley came across and uh, deflected the ball out. And the next thing I know, I see Perry Latchamore down. So um, and there's no cards given, so I'm just not sure what took place there. Well, he looks like he might be all right just shaking up a little bit. I think give him a little time and give him a hot dog or some french fries, he's going to be all right. <laughs> well, it's always a good sign to see a player walk off the field on his own. Uh, he's got a little limp there, but uh, they put in, uh, who they send in there? I, th I think it was uh, Nathan Racine is into the game now, and uh, he'll probably go in and parry Latchamore's place. Coach McAuliffe is with uh, Perry right now, and... Um, I think it's just something he can walk off. It, you know, there's some uh, grimace on Perry's face right now, but, uh, you know, that happens in the heat of the battle, and, um, you know, I think he'll walk it off. That's, when they walk off, that's a good sign. Absolutely. Just shaking up a little bit, give him a few minutes, uh, relax, and uh, uh, get in order, and uh, he'll probably be back. Yeah, I think you might see him before the game's out here. Um, Bowen had a chance there, but good defense by Trombley uh, to save his goalie, Jacob Beeman, from a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, but it is a corner kick, which is always dangerous, and that's a nice volley. Oh, what a header, and Beamer, just like last night, on the ground, made a great save. Wow, that was a phenomenal save by Beeman. I'll tell you what, that, that looked like it was definitely heading into the net. Shazy's got to be uh, very glad that didn't go in, and they gotta they got to step it up here. they got to put one in the back. They definitely need an insurance goal at this point. Well, Bowen only has three shots, but two of those shots have been quality shots, and Jacob Beeman has answered the call for both those shots. Uh, Kenny Boyer just sends it, or that was not, actually Nathan Racine. There's Kenny Boyer right now. He's not going to back down from anybody, and he's a big guy, kind of intimidating out there when you're playing against him. Shazy controlling the game, Stetson Fields. He's got some nice moves. Uh, usually when he gets in the box, there's always a chance somebody will take him down like that. No call made. They said play on. 
Bowles headed over to Baker. Baker over to Racine. Racine gets it over to the uh, corner, trying to hit Evan Green. But, you know, Nathan just came into the game. He's a little tight, and uh, it'll take him a couple minutes to uh, get in the flow of the game. Hey, he's only a sophomore, and it's gonna, he's just going to gain experience and experience over the years. Done a very good job when they put him in so far this year. He's a big boy, about six foot tall, six foot one. Uh, he's got to be 180, 190 pounds. Big, big gentleman for a sophomore. Uh, he's going to do a great job on defense for Shazy in the future years. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, Nathan Racine will be out there full time in the next, even as, as soon as next year, because Shazy has taken a major hit next year, especially on the defensive end of the ball. Uh, they're losing uh, Casey Trombley, uh, Kenny Boyer. They're losing Jordan Spiegel, losing Jacob Spiegel. So there's a lot of players that Shazy's losing next year, and. Um, Nathan Racine will definitely be filling one of those spots in. Okay, we we're at 23 minute mark. Um, the rain is coming down a little heavier. And you know, with the, the, the field getting slippier, Stob, there is that chance for that mistake which Bowen's been playing for. Absolutely, Joey, and uh, oh, jeez, Shazy has got to step it up here. I mean, this is late, late in the game, only a one nothing game. This is very, uh, very dangerous time. Uh, anything can happen at this point, and uh, to see him only up by a goal is just amazing at this point with uh, a team that scores six goals a game. Uh, this is a very low-scoring game for them, very unusual. Ten offsides, but you know you got to give your hats off to Bowen, and uh, you know they their strategy is to pack it in and not give Shazy uh, six goals in a game, and uh, that strategy is working. But they uh, they aren't scoring either, even though they've had two quality chances, and the Shazy goalie Jacob Beeman has been up to the task. He'll be white throwing with Evan Green. It's funny to see, and it's not funny to see. I mean, and Bolton is really pumped up at this point. One nothing in this ball game, this late in the game, and these guys are pumped up. They think that they can uh, uh, tie this game up, and very well they might. Well, we talked about it earlier. If Shazy, and at some point, I mean, uh, nothing ever goes on forever. At some point, Shazy will lose a game, and when it is, it will be big news. And as the game goes deeper in the second half, Bolton feels they might be the team that uh, will have the headlines if they can do it. But they got they got to get an offense going, and quite frankly, they haven't showed us any offense tonight, Stop. No, they haven't, Joey. Um, but uh, actually, Shazy's had a lot of opportunities, but just got to find that back of that net. Here comes a good opportunity. Oh, just over the net, and Shazy pushes on somebody. Yeah, Baker was going up for the header, and he pushed the uh, defensive player out of position. That was a very good call. That was a push by Baker, and it will be um, it will be Shazy ball. But um, Bowen has been substituting pretty freely. Yeah, Joey, but you, have you noticed though that Shazy has not had any really good quality shots on net uh, this half? I mean, they're they're up there, they're controlling the ball, but nobody's really unloaded yet. I mean, nobody's been around the 18 to 12 yard line and and let a ripper go. Uh, Oh, the ball was coming across. Evan Green looked like he had a shot at it, but Corey Ellis not realizing. Uh, got his foot on the ball and knocked away from Evan Green um, and tipped out by Bolton, so it's a corner kick. But Evan Green had a wonderful opportunity there, but uh, Corey Ellis didn't see him, and we have a corner kick. A dangerous play. Ball is headed out. See, they're trying to play for that break, and they have the numbers right now. Trombley and Boyer hustling back on defense for Shazy, and the ball went out, and Bolton lost it. There goes Ryan down again. They say play on. No whistle called. You can hear the Bolton play or player saying get on Ryan. And yeah, you better get on him. They're stopping it. it. Looks like a yellow card coming up. And if that's their big guy, is that number 30? He's been pretty rough out there tonight. And that would be Wayne Rich if it's who I think is getting it. And it is. 
This is a time joint where they should try that play that they did last night. It's a phenomenal play where uh, instead of chipping it over the defense, they just kind of slide it through and a, and a man comes out from the back and it's a wide open play. It's a real nice play that Shazy usually has. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to do it or not. It doesn't look like it. they got only two players out there. Usually they have three when they try this play. But uh, it really throws a lot of teams off. All right, here we go. Are they trying to play? There it is. That's the play we're talking about, pushing it out. Ellis, oh, man. But beautiful push over. Ellis just sent it over high. But that's the play we were talking about. We're wondering if we're going to see that tonight. But as every minute goes by, you see Bolton's confidence getting more and more stub. And with the ground being wet, they are playing for that opportunistic goal. Yes, they're definitely uh, they're definitely getting pumped up here. The longer this game goes on, the more chance that these guys have to tie this up. And boy, that's not going to be good for Shazy. Oh, here comes a real good opportunity right here. Oh, oh, a nice header, uh, but a strong, strong defensive play. Number 23 for Bolton, Luke Shane, uh, came in front of Ellis and took it away from him. And it was a great, great play. And again, you got 10 guys on the uh, the line for uh, Bolton, just trying to set up a wall. And you know, for these guys, losing one nothing might be a victory to them. Casey Trombley, that'd be three points in the NFL, but it was over the net, and we'll have a goal kick for Bolton. We're down to the 18-minute mark. We're one nothing Shazy on a Nolan Ryan header from a Corey Ellis cross. Shazy is outshot Bolton 16 to three. The corner kicks are seven to one, uh, which all those stats tell you is this game has been dominated by Shazy. But the strategy from Bolton has been to pack it in and uh, keep our our high-powered offense off the board and, and play for the break, but they, there's nobody on the offensive end of the ball right now for Bolton. Trombley takes the ball away and passes it up to Fields. Fields making his move, he's got some scissor moves, and he just buckled that number 24, you see that play? <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a play by uh, Stetson Fields. He just scissored around that ball about three or four times and got around his man, very, very nice play. He's got some definite moves, that gentleman. Kenny Boyer controls it, gets it over to Ryan, and Ryan pushes it over to Baker. Jason Baker has the ball. He tries to push it up over to Ellis. I'm not sure what happened there. But number 30 does not feel too good. Baker in uh, number 30, um, which is Wayne Rich. He might have landed on his hand. That's what uh, Calvin said. They've been banging against each other the whole game. Oh my God, Ryan pushed it in and Stetson Fields either missed the shot or it was deflected off him. No, it's a goal kick, he missed the shot. Oh, that was the best opportunity Shazy's had in a long time. I mean, they had two or three different opportunities there and Stetson was right open right there with a goalie and just misplaced the ball. They keep pressing like this, they will find the back of the net. The, the pressure is there. Uh, we're back to live action here with 16 minutes and 13 seconds left. And uh, you can tell Shazy's looking for that equal, or that uh, second goal just to give him a little breathing room. It'll be Shazy ball. Thrown in quickly by LaFountain over to Baker. Baker loading up. Yeah! Jason Baker lows up from about 25 yard lines in the upper right hand corner. Jason Baker has given Shazy a two to nothing lead. Stop, it was just a matter of time. Yes, it was, Joey, but that was a fantastic shot by uh, Jason. Right out at the 18 yard line, just let one rip in the upper right hand corner. Beautiful shot. The goalie didn't have any chance at all. That was uh, the insurance goal that Shazy definitely needed and was very desperate to have at this point. Well, Stop, we go back to what we talked about earlier. When you play that type of game, just trying to keep somebody off the board and you keep peppering the goalie, eventually you're going to score goals. And that's not the way to win a game, as far as Bolton goes.
Bolton's controlling the ball right now. Ball's cleared into the Shazy end. It skips. That's what happens on a wet field. Trombley clears it back to Baker. Trombley and uh, Kenny Boyer were talking well back there together. Ryan making the move. Pushes it over to Baker. You know, Shazy has so many weapons out there, Stop, other than Nolan Ryan, that anybody on the line or the midfield has the ability to find the back of the net. Absolutely, Joey. And uh, this year, uh, Mr. Baker, he came from the defense last year. He was actually a, a left the hat back last year and uh, moved up to the midfield position. And, and he's got, look at him, here's, here he is right here. He dribbles well. He shoots well. Uh, keeps the ball at his feet. He's a very good player. He's done a great job with uh, Jacob Spiegel up there in the midfield position this year. So that was a great move by Rob. Well, Jason is athletic. Uh, he does have a lot of skill, and that was the right move to take him off the defensive end and bring him out the midfield because he can control the game. Um, and you get him out there with uh, Jacob, and it's a pretty uh, potent one-two uh, midfield that we have out there. Yep, they do a, a fantastic job when they uh, Jacob and he get together. Uh, they pass very well together. They, they handle the ball well. They control the midfield. Uh, I'm sure he misses Jacob at this point, but uh, he'll be back next week. And uh, he's done a great job tonight with Nolan playing in a position he's not real familiar with. But, uh, hey, listen, they're getting the job done. Well, you know, I mean, we have to look at Jordan and Jacob Spiegel are out tonight, and those are two all-stars for the Shazy team. Uh, very well uh, experienced with the uh, two uh, state championship trophies that they have. They've gone deep into the uh, postseason the last two years. So you take two guys out of that, out of the lineup, that's a big shakeup for any team. Yeah, they, they, they definitely uh, are just missing a little something, but they're, they're, this team is doing very well tonight, uh, passing the ball well. See, they're definitely controlling the game more in this half. They were not together quite the first half, but uh, definitely getting the ball on the ground, short passes, triangle passes, that's what they need to do. You see, then there is a perfect example. The ball goes in the field. Uh, Bolton has back on defense. They send it back to the defense. They set up, and they move the ball to both ends of the field very, very well. Uh, Bolton did take control there with a direct kick. We're 13 minutes into the game. It's 2 nothing, or sorry, 13 minutes left in the game. We're up 2 nothing. When I say we're up, it's Shazy up 2 nothing. Shots on net are 20 for Shazy, 3 for Bolton. And two of those shots were real quality shots that uh, Jacob Beeman made nice saves on. And the corner kick category is 7-1. And they take Nolan Ryan down again. And they say play on. That was a tough one on Nolan. I could see that that uh, he he just tried to kick the ball very hard, and he's fine now. Oh, things are getting a little rough out here. Yeah, they're going to give him a card. That's not good. Kenny Boyer is holding that leg, and he is squirming out there. That has got to be a red card. That was just terrible. Oh, man, that's not good. Calvin, we want to see that one on replay to see how that happened. Can you write that back for us? That is just absolutely terrible, you know. To take you, you just hate to see that. You don't take another kid down like that. I mean, they played an inspired game, Bolton. Um, you're down two nothing. You just don't purposely take out a kid, especially a kid like Kenny Boer. I mean, he's a good kid. Um, he's still on the ground right now, and hopefully, he can get up and walk off on his own. Um, but it looks like he's grabbing his ankle. I mean, it's just it's just the last few games we've just been getting hit with injuries, and it's almost like player the teams are going out and taking pot shots at us. It's uh, it's, it's very it's not a good thing for the Shazy Eagles right now. We have so many players hurt. It's just every game it just seems like uh, we're getting worse and worse with the injuries, and uh, it's a struggle right now. Rob must not be sleeping at night just thinking of who how are we going to replace this player and how are we going to replace that player and who are we going to move into what position to make this thing still happen and uh, somehow he's uh, provided some miracles and and uh, he's got the job done but boy it's it's got to be very nerve-wracking on him uh, every game with injuries coming out especially at this time in the season well I'll tell you what it's uh, it's nice to see Kenny walk off on on his own not needing any help but the uh, the ref is talking to their coach um, 
letting him know, letting their coach know that this this kid, uh, what number was he stopped? I didn't even notice his number. 24. So that would have been uh, Chris Bliley uh, was kicked out of the game with a red card. It was a pretty vicious attack on Kenny Boyer. Um, he's out this game and out another game, and the ref is telling their coach that he can't play the next game. And also that they can't replace a player. So they're going to be down a player now. That's right. So they're going to be playing a man short. That's a good point, Stubb. Uh, but it was just a matter of time. I mean, th there's no reason for that type of chippiness. I mean, it's, uh, again, Bolton's been playing an inspired game, but you don't go around and take out a player because you're trailing 2 nothing. Well, it's Jay-Z's working their passing game. Trombley's got the ball, pushes it over to Evan Green. Green goes down the wing to the ever-dangerous Stetson Fields. Ball goes center. Ryan tries to hit Evan Green. Just a beautiful pass with his head. Uh, but it will be a corner kick for Shay Z. It will be their eighth corner kick of the game. A little over 12 minutes to go here in the first ha or the second half. 2-0 Shay Z, and they're hoping to uh, increase their score here on this corner kick. I think Corey Ellis is taking the kick right now. Ball comes in, it's dangerous. Good play by the goalie, knocking it over Evan Green's head. Trombley trapping the ball, getting it over to Ellis. Ball knocked away from Ellis. He's going to go in the corner. Sliding tackle, and it'll be Shazy ball. Corey Ellis has got to got to learn that he's got to play with his whole team out there. Um, he dribbles and he dribbles well, and he's got a beautiful shot. But he's got to make sure that he looks up often and 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 sees all the other players on the field and where they are. He seems to uh, get the ball and puts his head down and tries to go. He's got to learn that he's got to use all his players all the time. Well, you know, this is his first year starting, and every game he'll get better and better with it. Um, but you're right, and, and you know he's got to see, see the field open up a little bit more. But overall, he's a very good player. And uh, Trombley's got the ball right now. He's got it over to Stetson Fields. Fields getting, being challenged, looking for some help. He finds Ryan. Ryan's got the ball. Baker directs Ryan to go forward with the ball. Don't pass it back. There's some scissor moves from Ryan. Sends it over to um, Brad Hansen on the wing. And Brad Hansen can be dangerous with this ball. He pushes it back over to Nathan Racine. Racine sends it to the box. Kyle Fountain had it for a second. Baker rushes to the ball, and, and his hustle wins the ball for Shay Z. Ball is going out, but I think it's going to be, yes, it is. It's Bolton ball. We're almost at the 10 minute mark uh, left here in the game. We got a pretty steady rain coming down. I'm not sure if it sure if it shows on the camera, um, but it's a steady rain, and Shazy is hanging on to a two nothing lead. I don't want to use the word hanging on. They they've controlled the game, so it's not like they're on their heels here. Uh, but the ball is in the um, Shazy end, but just temporarily with the pass work that Shazy has. It's just one or two passes, and they'll be out of there. And there you are. Shazy is very predictable with their game, at least for us sitting up here, for all the games that we've seen them play through the years. Uh, Absolutely, Joey, and uh, you can see that Bolton just lets them open up the whole field, uh, right now especially. I mean, this field is wide open in the middle. Uh, Shazy should definitely have some good opportunities to score at this point. They're not packing in like they were. Seems like they're coming up to the midfield a little bit better and uh, opening up the midfield so that uh, Shazy should be able to work this ball down with their short passing game. Stop. We've just seen like seven passes. I think it's like eight passes in a row. It's almost like they're playing keep away right now. Um, just passing the ball back and forth to each other. Nothing, No panicking. I think you're going to see there's a pass over to Trombley from Trombley. Casey Trombley to Galen Trombley. A perfect pass over to uh, Kyle Fountain. and gets over to Nolan Ryan. And there's another pass to um, Corey Ellis. So you're seeing four, five, six passes in a row from Shay Z. And, and there's a bullet of a shot wide from Coriolis from about the 20-yard line. But nice ball movement from Shay Z. It is a goal kick, but it's just not, it's fun to watch him up here, Stab. Yeah, and I mean, at this point in the game, I, I'm sure Rob has told him, you listen, when you get about eight, eight minutes down, seven minutes down, use the clock. I mean, that's what Rob is good at, too, uh, uh, substituting players at this point in the game. Uh, you know, lose about 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, pass it around, just work the clock. You got the lead, you got the, uh, the game pretty much intact. Uh, let's not go crazy. Let's just have some fun and uh, let's wear out the clock. Well, you know, if you look at what Shay is doing, and it's not a bad strategy. They're, I mean, they are basically playing keep away. And 
Rob doesn't want anybody else getting hurt, you know. So it's like, hey, just, you know, hold back here, pass the ball around, let's just move it, play a little keep away. Uh, we don't need anybody else hurt here as we go deeper into the season. But good news, it looks like Kenny Boyer is getting ready to check back in, and uh, that's really good to see because Shazy does not need any more injuries right now. And, and look at that, they're just like playing the clock out. I mean, Galen had five options to pass because they are wide open, like you said. And uh, there they go with their passing again. What this game needs is a shot clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like basketball, eh, Calvin? 30-second uh, shot clock. 30-second shot clock. Casey Trombley clears it out. But, I mean, Shazy has been basically playing keep away for the last couple minutes, and I think it's more to avoid any injuries. But Kenny Boyer is getting ready to check back in. At least it looks like he is. He's on the sidelines down below us here, and I think he's waiting for his opportunity to get into the game. Yeah, you can see these these guys are getting definitely tired, Joey. Uh, the, the 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 stamina of the game is definitely slowed down. Uh, it's kind of a keep away passing game right now. Look at how open this field is. Uh, this is a, a scorer's dream right here to have that much of a field open, and I'm just kind of shocked that Shazy hasn't taken advantage of it. Well, I think it's almost like uh, Coach McAuliffe is just telling the boys, you know, let's let's not let's not chance it. You know, we, we've made some moves here, and, and um, Bolton's been very, very aggressive on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, my, my roster of hurt players doesn't need to uh, expand any more than it already is. Absolutely. And, and, I mean, and Kenny Boyer is an all-star, too. So, you know, you, you hate it now. Look, he's moving pretty well there, so that's a nice thing to see. Nice moves by Baker over to Ryan. And Ryan could see him. He must have eyes behind his head because he saw that player was approaching him and he just pushed it over to Baker. Well, his mother told me that he did have one eye behind his head, but she wasn't sure about two. And you can definitely see it some of the games when he puts goals in, when uh, he's in back, he's got his uh, back against the goal and he, and he twists somehow and just finds the back of the net. He's an amazing player. Oh, Corey Ellis has the ball. He's looking up, trying to find Brad Hansen. Makes a nice move. Ellis is getting by the players. But he's got to push off to somebody. He finally does to Brad Hansen. Ryan tries to get the ball. Brad Hansen has it. He pushes it back to, is that Racine? Nathan Racine sends it across field. Casey Trombley has it. He has some space to go up. It looks like Casey wants to load up. That went off a defender. Nope, it is a uh, goal kick. Shanked off Casey's foot. Uh, we're down to five minutes and 22 seconds. Stop. I would, the way the uh, the offensive Bolton has gone, I would say this game should be in hand at this point. I would think so too, Joey. It's uh, there's no way that they're going to come back with five minutes left. Not with Shazy holding a, about a 20 to three shot advantage. Uh, this game is pretty much over. I think Shazy's just trying. Oh, look at this! Oh, almost another goal by. Uh, Corey Ellis had a beautiful shot, and the goalie just tipped it over the net. Well, the, whole, the goalie didn't get hurt there. He play, he had to knock that way. It was finding its way in the corner. I think his shoulder hit the uh, the pole. It was a great save, a great shot by Corey Ellis, and a great save by the Bolton goalie. Uh, and it's a corner kick for Shea Z. It's their ninth one of the game. Uh, they've out they've won that category tonight, nine to one. Um, and this could be dangerous. Beautiful, beautiful volley in, into the net. Good job. It's cleared out. But, you know, psychologically, it's a victory tonight for Bolton. Uh, anytime you keep Shazy down to two goals, that's, that's a good thing, I would say. That yeah, Ryan goes down. Everybody's going down in the box. Well, they're finally blowing the whistle. I think they called it on Ellis. But it will be Bolton ball. I think Ellis ran over somebody uh, in the box. Joey, I think that these boys are going to be very, very glad when this game is over.
tomorrow is going to be an R&R &R day for everybody, and uh, I hope that they can take advantage of it and uh, take some time to relax and heal up. It's been a long, long week for them. Uh, they play Scroon Lake on Monday. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll probably have the same team out there for Monday's game. And, uh, you know, hopefully by next Thursday they'll get most of their team back. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so many injuries at this point, so many people with... Uh, sore muscles and aches and pains and you know just be nice to see hopefully they can get a little bit of health and back into them well you know I mean everybody knows as, as far as if you're a Shazy soccer fan uh, the game a week from uh, I think it's Wednesday is the game is uh, back in E-Town and that was a, a great game here a couple weeks ago and uh, I can assure you there'll be as many fans in E-Town as there were here that night and it should be a great game and, and I think by that period of time, the uh, the players should be healed and they should be at full strength for their their biggest rival this year, which is Elizabethtown. Well, we hope so, Joey, because that's going to be definitely a big, big game for Shazy. They have to win that game. If they don't win that game and they remain undefeated, uh, they'll be tied for first place, and then they'll have to have another game for uh, at the end of the year. Hopefully, I mean, uh, assuming that both teams continue to win, uh, they'll have to be a playoff game for the uh, MVAC uh, league title. So Shazy's got to win that game also, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting game. A lot of people will be there um, on their field. Uh, it was really weird. Last year, uh, or a couple years ago, E-Town beat us on our field. And actually, last year on our field, we only beat uh, E-Town one nothing. This year, we beat them 4-1. to one. And then we went and played on their field, and I think it was 5-1. to one. So it, it's kind of different how we scored more goals on them on their own field. Usually that's a huge advantage for any team, but uh, we did it. But, uh, hey, going down an airfield, it's always scary. They're always very, very pumped for Shazy, and we don't want to look ahead. Uh, it's just uh, saying that, uh, you know, we we got to get ourselves healthy again. Uh, it's, it's not good with having this many uh, of the boys that are hurting at this time in the year. Well, it leads me to this question, Stav. You know, we're talking about going down to E-Town. E-Town has a much smaller field than what we have here. Is that an advantage to E-Town or is that an advantage to us? That's definitely an advantage to E-Town. I mean, these boys from Shazy like a big, wide, open field. Their passing game kind of depends on an open field. And uh, when they go down to E-Town, they got to be quicker and they got to be sharper. And uh, uh, it's definitely an advantage to E-Town. There's no question about it. Well, it will be an exciting game. This one here is coming to a close. We actually have 48 seconds left. Uh, so Shazy, I think, is going to go with 47 games in a row. I have not lost a game. Uh, but for Bowen, this in its own way was a victory for them. I mean, they, they, they kept us to only two goals. I mean, they were totally outplayed. But again, how many teams can say they've held Shazy to two goals other than in the Final Four? Absolutely. I think they uh, should be proud of themselves. They played a good defensive game, uh, not much on the offensive side, but when they did come on the offense, they had a couple of very good opportunities. Shazy was lucky on one of them, a beautiful header on Beeman, and he had a great save. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for 2-0, uh, I think they know that they're down a few players and uh, uh, weren't at their, as Tiger Woods says, didn't have their A game going tonight, but uh, they got the job done. Well, stop. Good teams find a way to win, and Shazy was no different tonight. They're a good team, and uh, they won two to nothing. Uh, I'll give you the stats here. It was two nothing. Shots on net were 22 to three in favor of Shazy. Corner kicks nine to one, and uh, Shazy extends their winning streak. Uh, I think it's 47 games now, and as. Mike Camberman here, Calvin Castan likes to say that's the way it was on September 30th, 2006.